What if you had a business that was making $100,000 in one month? That seems like a pretty good position to be in. But what if this business was failing miserably and actually you were losing money? You were in the red, you weren't making any profit, even though you had $100,000 a month in sales. That would be a very tough position to be in, especially if you're an entrepreneur, a business owner, because you have to figure out it's not working, you've got to change, you have to make a pivot. Now thankfully, this wasn't my experience, this was actually experience of a close friend of mine. Now he has gone on to do some amazing things. This guy is a former Marine officer, a very successful entrepreneur, and also a high level YouTuber that produces some amazing content. And I got a chance to have breakfast with him and learn more about his story. Let's go find out who this guy is. All right, I'm heading to one of my favorite breakfast joints here in the Nashville area. It's called First Watch. They've got some really good healthy food, so if you're trying to, you know, eat healthy and really connect with some uh, awesome people, a lot of people go here. I actually saw Dave Ramsey here yesterday. I was meeting some friends for breakfast and uh, he came in. But today, a good buddy of mine who uh, doesn't live in the Nashville area, but uh, is in town visiting, his name is Antonio Centeno, and you might know him from Real Men, Real Style. The dude has has, oh, I think almost 2 million YouTube subscribers. He is making a killing, very successful entrepreneur, but also was in the Marine Corps. Uh, I'm not sure for how many years. I do know he was a Marine officer. So hoorah, the dude is legit. We met at a conference. This is like five or six years ago. He, real man, real style, right? So he always is very presentable. Uh, he knows fashion, but he also has this, uh, this demeanor about him that you you know that he was a a marine like you know like you can just tell he has this look uh, and you'll see in, in our interview now he was here had a chance to share a story of you know his journey of becoming an entrepreneur he had a business that uh, was making money had sales over a hundred thousand dollars in a month but he actually lost money and that's a tough situation to be in i'm thankful that i've never been in that situation where i was had a lot of a lot of sales a lot of revenue but the profit wasn't there like i'm not really sure what i would do i've had some hardships which i'll share at the end here but he was in a very tough situation where he, he had a, a good idea he had the sales but he couldn't figure out a way to actually make it profitable and he had a very tough decision to make for a lot of people it's hard for them to go through this journey. So that's why I wanted to share Antonio's story so that you can hear someone that basically had to admit that he failed, like his, his business was failing and he had to do something different. Otherwise, you know, he was gonna go bankrupt. You know, he was supporting his family. So he had to do, he had to change it up. And this is his story. This is what he learned. And I, I'm excited to share his story because there are some amazing takeaways I know you're gonna get from this. So let's learn more about Antonio. What's going on? So I'm excited to have my buddy here, Antonio. Um, we met at a conference a long time ago. De we, decades ago. Decades, decades ago. ago. <laughs> Hence uh, all the white hairs I've got. Uh, but Antonio has been like an online friend. He's been a mentor. I mean, he's got obviously a killer YouTube channel. The, the, the dude dresses with style, as you can see. Jeff's uh, not looking bad either. He's got some nice casual <laughs> shoes, got you know pants. I mean, we were just talking about his style, but we're not getting into that today, right? We're talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we can hold that off for, a, yeah, for another for time. For another episode. Another time. Now, the other thing that Antonio and I shared together is that we have a military background. Now, I was I was in the Army National Corps for nine years. Which I'm sorry about. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, come on, the Marine Corps. We know that's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, and I mean Antonio. Not, I mean, not only am, am I intimidated with his well-dressed, uh, you know, his stature, but I mean, he's got this look. Give him the look. Like yeah. that's that's the look of a Marine officer. Yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of scary. We'll zoom in on that for this video. So yes. But uh, so tell for those that don't know, give us a little quick background of your military career. Yeah, so I entered the military in 1997 through OCS, uh, joined the United States Marine Corps out of college. I wasn't smart enough to actually get them to pay for my college. I joined up, got excited. My brother was uh, was an enlisted Marine. My father was an enlisted uh, Army. And almost everyone in my military, most of the men, had served in the military. And it was just something I felt uh, would be a great step. I actually didn't know what I was going to do out of college. I had this degree in philosophy and origins and behavior. I knew I didn't want to be a doctor anymore. And so I 
joined up with the Marine Corps. I figured, hey, that would be a great step. And I think that we'll both agree that there are some amazing people in the military. And it's one of those things that when you put yourself in and around amazing people, it's something I, I've heard you talk about. You know, you become the average of the people you surround yourself with. Yeah. And I had to I had to take my game up to the next level when I'm around these guys that went to the Naval Academy, that you know, went to, you know, in the Army, uh, you know, you guys got West Point, whatever happens over there. I'm not gonna, yeah. But the, yeah, the thing is you put yourself around these guys and you're forced to elevate. And it wasn't just the officer side. It was, you know, I had an amazing staff sergeant who had four kids, yet was the first guy there, the last guy out, had a great relationship from what I could tell with his wife and his family. And it inspired me to like, wow, like this guy, if he can have it together, I need to I need to take myself up to the next level. Now the one thing about being in the military is that we are trained not to fail. I mean, you go, you don't give up. I mean, so you, you're trained to win. And I know for me, applying that to business, like I, that's how I've approached business. Like yeah. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to succeed. And it's been really hard at times to accept the fact that if something wasn't working out and just to like throw up the white flag and realize, I gotta do something else. Yep. So you left the military, um, you were a CFO for a company that didn't work out and you're yep. looking for that next thing. And for you, that was a company called a tailor suit, correct? Yep, that was my first company that I founded in 2007. And you know, Jeff was talking about in the military, yeah, failure's not an option, you hear that. But I think that really, we just become very hard headed and we realize that what many people consider failure, no, no, no we got, still got a lot of room. So in the military, like I always thought, if I have my truck and I have a can of beans and I mean I'm pretty good to go like I don't need I can lose everything in my life uh, you know and there's a lot of guys that lose in the military unfortunately they lose their wives they they you know they end up getting multiple divorces and it just doesn't work out they don't have a relationship with their kids I wasn't willing to give that up but I was like willing to suffer through a lot and that can backfire on you especially if you're not taking care of yourself not taking care of your body it can only go so far and I realized after a few years in with a tailored suit I was being hard-headed I was making less I mean I might as well have been working a minimum wage job so I would have been making more I was you know I, I was telling Jeff I had a hundred thousand dollars in sales we got one month but I had more than a hundred thousand in expenses go out the door and that doesn't you can't scale that that's not that may sound great but when you're losing money that, that's just a bad place to be and where I, I was hard-headed it took me years to actually give up on this dream but the one thing that I didn't you know I, I didn't give up on is the dream and I knew that I had potential I have the ability to succeed and that people without the same drive without actually you know I think as much you know have gone through the same things I've gone through have succeeded and so I knew it was just a matter of okay I failed here but I can turn around. It's like Chesty Puller said this in uh, over in Korea. You know, when he was surrounded, you know, it was like, okay, well, the enemy now is like, I can shoot in any direction and hit the enemy. But it was also as they were asking them, are the Marines retreating? No, it was simply, we're just, you know, we're just fighting in a different direction. You know, it, and that's what you have to look at whenever you are faced with ultimate failure is, okay, really, is it ultimate? If I've got my family, if I've got my health, I've got really the most important things that matter. And from that, like, come back stronger. Come back, I'm not gonna make this mistake again. I was just talking with a woman and she was telling me how she's been in business for a year and she uh, lost money this last year. Uh, she didn't actually make that much, but she also, she lost money. And I'm like, well, at least you didn't lose, she only lost a thousand bucks this last year with their business, didn't make that much, but I'm like, well, at least you only lost a thousand because I've talked with people that have lost a hundred thousand, yeah. that have lost millions. And uh, you know, it's, when you fail small, that, that's okay, but pick yourself up and keep going. And that's probably maybe the thing that I think we both picked up from the military is that there is there is real failure. Am I, I mean, death, yeah, it's coming for us all. But if you realize that, you know, it, like what I just went through, this bankruptcy, that's not the end of the world. You are bigger than that. And there's a reason why bankruptcy is there, so that you can escape from that debt and keep going and go off and, and restart and figure things out and keep going. Can you talk a little bit about that that transition? Because a lot of times that's hard for people. Yeah, hard for people to accept. Like this didn't work. Um, I can think of a time in my life where something didn't work, and I remember for me it was my blog. I got hit with a, a Google update, and my search engine tra traffic dropped like 75% overnight. Yep. And it took me about two to three weeks 
Uh, first, I had to like go in a corner and cry. Um, I, I'm gonna admit that out loud. Yes, I was in the military and I do cry. Um, but it was something beyond my control and I didn't know what to do. It finally, I just kind of had to take some time away before I could actually, like you said, come back stronger. Yeah. I did, but a lot of people can't. You know, something hard happens and they yep. just, they throw in the towel and they give up. Yep. You know, in your case, like how long was it for you from that transition of acknowledging that this first idea didn't work and now I'm gonna go and pivot, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, it was a long time. I didn't wanna give up. But here's a quick story. So we're on right now a three week trip and we were three hours away from home. And guess what I realized I forgot at home. We are in Minneapolis and I go to pay for gas and I don't have my wallet. Now, I've got four kids that have already been, we're already three hours into our trip down to Austin, Texas from central Wisconsin. And you know, I got so upset. I am like, I'm like, I'm not gonna say the words I was saying there, but I, I immediately started driving back home. And my wife looks at me and says, you are not thinking logically. You've got, we can call Claudia, uh, you know, our local friend. She will overnight you the, the wallet. I've got some money. We will be fine till we get to Austin. And she was exactly right. You need to have someone that in your life is your cheerleader, is someone that is going to take care, is gonna talk reason to you. It could be your father, could be your, your wife, it could be your girlfriend, could be your, your boyfriend. I don't know, it could just be a partner that you've got, someone that you can call and you can commiserate with. They'll listen to you and then they're also gonna talk sense in you. And you need those people. And I really, that would be the first thing I would focus on. You've gotta have people in your life, and they're all around. You've just gotta take the time to build those relationships, give to them first, but invest there, and you'll have people that will help, you know, get you through those tough times. And I love it because you all, you always hear this expression, this phrase, overnight success. You know, what that looks like, that doesn't happen and the failures that you went through, the, the pivots that you went through, having those cheerleaders, those, those positive influences in your life, I mean, we're talking years to get to where you're at right now. Yeah. Um, and for me, like, I'm thankful for those times. Yeah, and growth is not, like, a lot of people think it, it goes smooth like this. The life of an entrepreneur is like, like, and you have these super high, and then you fall again. Like, we have troubles right now in with our company. I mean, they're not bad troubles, but they are, you know, they're, they're, they're nice troubles to have, but they are, problems will never go away. You will always have problems, but you wanna put yourself in a position and make sure whenever you get these really high to always be thinking, okay, I'm gonna experience that low. You know it's coming and you prepare for it. You shore up your finances. You put yourself in a position. You know, when you had that Google, you dropped off for organic traffic, you probably thought, you know what? I need to diversify. I need to, it's like the guy that puts all of his money into his business, doesn't put anything in the stock market, doesn't put anything an emergency fund, doesn't put anything into real estate. You diversify because you as, as you know, you gotta protect yourself from yourself sometimes. We can be overly optimistic about our ability and the one place where we're restoring things. But I like to be diversified now, and uh, yeah, that's what I took from the failure of putting everything into to one uh, down one avenue. Yeah, so, I mean, that's just a cool story about Antonio, and I, I knew that about Taylor Suit. I think we actually connected when you still had that. I mean, yep. it, it was still there. I mean, the site's still there. Yep, I think we were both riding for the Art of Manliness. Or, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's that connection. Yeah. 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 So anyway, but Antonio's here in Nashville. We got a chance to eat breakfast. Uh, just had some good conversation. I wanted to bring him because I think that the the acknowledging the failure. Yep. I mean, some people can acknowledge that it's not working. Uh, some people can acknowledge that it worked, but then they give up and then they go back to the nine to five job or they hate or they never actually approach that business idea or the next business idea because they look at their past and use that as their indicator for future results and. I, Failures are gonna happen, yeah. you know, and you just have to acknowledge that. And anything else you just wanna to add to that? Obstacles are there to stop other people. If you really wanna succeed, you, you just gotta figure, you gotta find a way around it. If you are healthy, if you are relatively young, let's say you're 65, you're in good shape. Well, guess what? You're gonna, what, live, live to be 95, right? You got 30 years to transform the world. Quit thinking about like poor me and think, you know what? What, how can I have impact? How can I change? Maybe it's just one person. Well, that starts, that's where the world starts, with that one person, and move on from that, and provide value, and yeah, just understand we all fail. It's normal. Yeah. Antonio, high five. Cool, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Whew. 
All right, I'm back from my breakfast meeting with Antonio. Man, we had a blast. I mean, we basically ate and talked for almost three, actually over three hours. Uh, we recorded a video for his channel. He recorded a video, uh, this video for my channel. And uh, man, we just had a really, really good time. And in that, in his talk and in his message, I feel like the, the one thing that I want you to remember from that is the word pivot. And that's a, that's a word that's typically used with entrepreneurs or you know, with startups, but basically it's, it's any business or even any individual that you think you have a goal in mind or you have a destination in mind, and as you're going down that path, all of a sudden you realize, man, we're not on the right path. We're making some progress, but we need to make a change. Could be a major change, could be a subtle change, but we need to make a pivot in what we're doing with our business or with what we're doing with our, our journey, whatever we're trying to accomplish. And sometimes in those pivotal moments, I mean, with Antonio, like, he was on the right track. You know, he was talking about style for men because he felt like that, that was a niche that needed to be served. But instead of offering custom tailored suits, instead it was more about education and just giving the, the resources, the tools, the how to uh, for men to uh, dress with success or, you know, the right jeans to wear, the right sport coats to wear, when to wear a bow tie, when do you wear uh, a blazer with jeans? I mean, all these things that men, I mean, I, I don't have all that information, but like he did and he wanted to share that with as many men that, that he could. He started with a tailored suit, didn't quite work out, but that's what led him to real men, real style, and just the amazing community that he's developed. Now for me, like I didn't have, I guess, any major pivots. Um, I know I mentioned in the video how with my blog, you know, I saw my search engine traffic drop 75% overnight, and, and I'm not exaggerating. I was getting over 100,000 unique visitors per month, and then Google made some update. Thanks, Google. And I saw my traffic go from 100,000 unique visitors per month down to 25,000. The worst part about that whole experience was I didn't know what I did wrong. Like I didn't get a letter from Google telling me what I needed to do to fix it. They didn't send me an email. They didn't, didn't feel the need to notify me uh, what I did and, and with no steps to make that right. I didn't know, I didn't know what to do. And I made a pivot in a sense where I had to remind myself why I started the blog. Yes, I was making some money. Yes, I was also in the search traffic that I was getting, but I had to remind myself like why I started it. And for me, like Antonio, it was educating. It was helping people make smart investment decisions because there's just so much information out there that most people don't do anything or they don't trust the information that they're getting and they don't do anything. And that's why I started the blog. Like that was the inspiration, that was the motivation. So I went, I went back to that and I just said, you know what, that's fine. Google, you took away my traffic. I lost it, I can get it back. So the pivot for me was to remind myself why I started the blog. And funny enough, that's when I started doing more YouTube uh, back in the day, because this is back in 2011 when I didn't have a YouTube channel. And I thought, all right, Google, if you're gonna, if you're gonna take away my search engine traffic, then I'll do that again still, but I'm gonna go other areas and see if I can grow my audience elsewhere. And that's where YouTube came into play and that's how Antonio and I end up meeting up because we had that commonality as well. So pivot. Most likely you've hit a situation in your life, in your career, where you started down a path, a journey, and it didn't quite end the way that you wanted. But a lot of times people just quit. They like, man, I had this goal to accomplish this. I didn't, I give up. As Antonio said, don't do that, don't give up. That's where you learn, that's where you can look at that experience and the capabilities and the, you learned a lot in that process. You took steps to, to get to where you got to, even though you didn't get to the desired end result, you still learned a lot in that process. And take ownership of that. Acknowledge the fact that you do have more experience than you did before you started and that's why it's so important to recognize what a pivot is. Do not define that as a failure. Do not give up, keep pushing forward, figure out what that is. You might not figure that out in the beginning. You know, Antonio didn't actually say how long it took him to make that pivot, but it sounds like it took him some time. You know, for me, it took me three weeks, three depressing weeks to kind of go through my pivot experience to, to go back and jump back on the wagon and start producing more content and getting into YouTube. So remember, it won't happen overnight, but the key thing is, is that you cannot quit. Don't quit, keep pushing forward. All right, so now I wanna hear from you. Was there a time in your life that you hit a pivot, that you had to make a change? 
What did you learn from that? Is there a time in your life that you had to make a pivot? Maybe it was in your college education where you started down a major and you decided to switch majors or maybe it was a career change. What was that pivotal time in your life? What was that key change that you made and where did it get you? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, if you like this video, if you like Antonio, if you like me, I know he dresses a whole lot better than I do, but you can give us both a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, Come on with it, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you know when the latest video is coming to you because guess what? I got more coming your way whether you like it or not. This is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, your life, and only you can make it awesome. Peace. Imagine you had a business that was making take two, take two. Imagine you had a hundred, yep, yep. I was supposed to be focused here on your crotch area. But... <laughs>